You know, if there's one thing to sum up Super Mario Brothers the movie, it's this. It's a piece of fucking shit. It's probably one of the worst films I've ever seen in my fucking entire life. This film has nothing to do with the video game franchise. Nothing about it. There's not even in the slightest of what represents Super Mario Brothers. Hell, you got the ba bomb in the intro, but that's it. That's the only thing they put in this movie. Nothing else. It's all live action, hardcore, and fire. And why the fuck is Bowser a human being and a descendant from the dinosaurs? Why? He's a fucking turtle. As for Daisy, she's just some Egyptian princess, not a dinosaur. You look at Toad. He looks like some sort of rejected punk star. And Yoshi looks like he got fucked up by nature through birth. And why the fuck is Mario Luigi being played by a British and Latino actor? And how did the film suck so bad when there's three directors in this movie? Well, originally three, until one of them had to leave the project because apparently the director knew this film was gonna fucking suck! And you know what's really fucking sad? There's actually an animated Super Mario Brothers movie. And it's called... Super Mario Bros. Great Mission to Rescue Princess Peach, aka Mario Anime. This film was released in 1986. Now my question is, why the fuck did the United States not distribute this film and dub it and release it in theaters? That would have been a whole lot fucking better, but no, we gotta go fucking live action. Overall, this film fucking sucks. Whatever you do, do not ever, ever watch yourself watch this movie. I'm done, have a nice fucking day! Full review of it will be coming soon. I know it's a month overdue, but fuck it. Hey everybody, T4 here with another rant, and this rant is gonna be holiday related. Yay! Okay, let's get this over with. Uh, today's rant is gonna be about certain adults that actually hand out pamphlets to obese trick-or-treaters. Let me explain this. Um, a friend of mine posted something on Facebook, it was a news article to which I'm gonna read this out loud for all of you so that way you all can understand you know where I'm coming from that and just the summarization of what it is I'm gonna read the first two paragraphs okay a woman has decided to take childhood obesity into her own hands with a letter she plans to hand out to children she said she believes are moderately obese I just want to send a message to the parents of kids that are really overweight, a woman only known as Cheryl said Tuesday. Sorry to my female viewers that are named Cheryl. My respect goes to you. I think it's just really irresponsible of parents to send them out looking for free candy just because all the other kids are doing it. Think about that for a moment. For a moment. Do you know how stupendous this idea is? Because for one, you're not those children's parents. It is not your responsibility. If these kids want to, you know, stuff their face with candy, then that's their choice. Plus, if if a child is to be, you know, regulated on a healthy diet, that's mainly the their parents' responsibility, not yours. Now, some of, you mean, some of you might be wondering what the letter said. Well, let me read it out to you. And this, this says, I quote, Happy Halloween and happy holidays, neighbor. You are probably wondering why your child has this note. Have you ever heard the saying, It takes a village to raise a child? I am disappointed in the village of Vargo Morewood. West Fargo. You... You mean your child is. Your child is, in my opinion, moderately obese and should not be consuming sugar and treats to the extent of some children this Halloween season. <sighs> my hope is that you will step up as a parent and ration candy this Halloween and not allow your child to continue these unhealthy eating habits. Unquote. Okay. If I was to hand out, you know, candy to trick-or-treaters, whether they are 
moderately around the average body mass index or if they're overweight or obese. I don't think they would eat a whole bag of Halloween candy overnight. Plus, suppose you eat all that candy. What's wrong? What's what's gonna go wrong? This child's gonna gain like what? Oh no! My child gained three pounds from candy. Oh no! It's not like my child can go on a diet or go exercise. Oh, the hardships of parenting. <sighs> Okay, lady, here's the deal. You are not their babysitters. Your job is to either hand over candy, or you don't. It is as simple as that. If you don't want to give them, heck, you don't even have to give them candy. Just give them, like, bubble gum, or, um, pretzels, or, um, heck, even a small bag of carrots. A baby carrots isn't going to kill you. I mean, fuck, I'd rather have a freaking rock than just a stupid letter telling me that I'm fat. But... A freaking note? Are you serious? That's like, you know, going out for trick-or-treating and instead of, you know, giving like, some bag of candy, you're giving a letter to see how you should be reborn through, you know, Jesus Christ's name or whatever. You know, like Jehovah's Witness kind of shit. Um, but the whole idea just boggles me. Like, I never heard of a, of a Halloween method where... A child is given, you know, a letter or a note that reads, oh, you can't have candy because I think you're overweight. Okay, for one, not only does it mess a child's perception on how he looks, but it's also probably going to, you know, piss off a parent or something because for one, they're most likely going to get pissed because they're being told on how to raise their kids. Also, it's a former way of saying, Oh, your kid's too fat. He get some, some, doesn't get to get some candy. Like, lady, who the hell are you to be so judgmental on a child's appearance? Like, come on, a little bit of candy is not gonna kill a child. Now, if you eat a humongous quantities of candy, then yeah, it's probably gonna kill you, especially for your teeth. Good God. And plus... What if that one particular obese child just doesn't like to eat candy? He just likes to eat, you know, certain healthy stuff or whatever. Or he just wants to have go get candy just because he hasn't had candy in a while. He goes trick-or-treating and probably gets a letter. It's probably going to screw over his peer pressure. Or, um, no, no, not peer pressure. His uh, self-confidence, you know, something like that. It's not a letter helping people, it's just very demeaning. And if anything, it's irresponsible. Now, I can understand where she's coming from, because I am concerned about the obesity epidemic. But that's not her job, it's the parents. Now, if she wants to bring up the issue of obesity, let alone child obesity, then she can make a vlog series or a blog, you know, about it, or make a series of videos, or heck, even a documentary, you know, talking about the issue of obesity. And it's not just candy or just food that causes it. There's so many factors to obesity. And again, if you want to help to prevent childhood obesity, just don't give them candy. Just give them something healthy, like carrots or, um, what, grapes? Kids will like grapes, right? Um, sliced apples, um, probably a banana, um, tangerines, those are pretty good. Or fuck, even a Hot Pocket, I don't fucking know. Yeah, like that, don't give them a freaking letter that's pretty much your way of saying, oh, your child's fat. <laughs> What was that? Uh, sorry, uh, technical difficulties, I don't know how the fuck that got there, but anyway. Now I know that you're all getting used to my smexy voice, but I gots to get going. So, happy Halloween, gorge yourself with some candy, watch some crazy, scary, or horror movies, um, watch torture porn, or whatever the fuck, you know, genres of horror films that you all like to watch. 
you know, uh, enjoy your time at the Halloween houses and whatnot. This is T4 saying, have a nice Halloween, everybody. Now, if you may go, excuse me, I'm going to sit through a crazy horror movie marathon and gourd down some candy. Um, 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 no. <laughs> They're dogs! And they're playing punk! Ho 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 ho! Merry Christmas! <laughs> My jingle balls! Ah, shut up, Santa. You don't deserve to be in Christmas this year. Because of all the political credits you've been through. Oh, hello, everybody! Merry Christmas! Or, uh, Happy Hanukkah. Or Happy Kwanzaa. Well, we would just get that, you know. You know, just the usual. <clears throat> so, um, you're all wondering what I want for Christmas. Well, personally, I want the Nintendo DS Lite, three Nintendo DS games, and a new Swim PS2. But really, what else do I want for Christmas? Well, one thing. For political critics to shut the fuck up about the sodomy of Santa Claus. For example, how Santa Claus should be thin. Why? What's wrong with him being fat? I mean, if I see a fat person, then they're fat. I don't care if they're fat, personally. But what's wrong with Santa Claus being fat? Well, here's their complaint from political correctness. They think this is influencing kids to be like Santa Claus. What? And another thing, the reason why they're thinking about it is because, oh, I don't know, because fat people are offended by it. So let me get this straight. Throughout the many centuries, Santa Claus was overweight. You didn't b about it then, but why the time now to go b about it? What a bunch of hypocrites, I swear. I mean, hell, if you're offended by her, I got an advice for you. Either one, you remain to be fat by your own choice, or two, go on a f diet. I mean, really, I don't see the point of you just b about it now. I mean, I'm sure that back then, the reason why they didn't take it so offensively was because there wasn't a lot of fat people. But now you're getting a lot of fat people throughout the many years, and now they're getting offended by it because of their image. What the f- <coughs> First of all, it's your fault for making yourself fat like that, and if you don't like it, well guess what? Lose the f- <coughs> Wait, that, or you can just well, go, oh well, I'm fat. That's just part of my life, you know. <laughs> it's your choice. But there's no point for you to go b oh. about it for no apparent reason. Oh, and here's something new for Santa Claus. They're trying to get rid of the wor one traditional Christmas saying that Santa Claus used to say all the time. Can you guess what it is? Time's up. Alright. Um... They want to try to replace the words ho, ho, ho. What? Why the f <coughs> replace that? It's been around for years. <coughs> decades. Centuries. Hello? Oh, wait. I forgot. Back then, we didn't used to say hoes, but now we're saying hoes. Well, it's like, uh, well, man, uh, the word ho is pimping for a ho. You know, a ho's being owned by a pimp. So let me get this straight. The reason why they want to replace Santa's ho 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 is because it's a slang pimp term for a ho. Simpy, you idiot! And guess words that political correctness wants to replace it with? The words ha ha ha, Merry Christmas. Ha ha ha. Isn't that like laughing at someone? If Santa Claus said that, he'd be laughing at the kid for crying out loud. If the term ho 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 was used, it would be a representation of jolliness. Give me a break. What's wrong with ho ho ho? Ho ho ho's a laugh too, you dumb bitch. <gasps> okay, seriously, whoever made these stupid sh I walls that they're going to make soon, I got something to say to you. You're fucking selfish <laughs> bastards. You're trying to destroy the moral traditions of Christmas and what it should be. But no, you just want to make it worse. What's next? Peter bashing on the reindeer? Oh, oh, wait. That Santa Claus red suit 
represents communism. Huh? Is that what you're gonna do, political correctness? Answer me, God. Oh, 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 oh. And I want to say this in quote. This is from Chibi Fighter on Big Al's comments. Let me tell you, there is swearing. View discretion is strongly advised. And I quote, What the fuck is wrong with Santa being fat? God, people are just fucking shallow, superficial morons. Fuck, everything has to be thin these days. What the hell is wrong with a bit of fat? I like that son of is fat. It goes with the whole suit. It makes him look very happy and friendly. Plus, who the fucking cares he's an imaginary fictional character? I am sorry if anyone gets offended, but I just wanted to get my point out of how stupid everybody is nowadays. Ha oh, ha is awesome. It's good. Ha oh, ha would just be stupid and creepy. I'll give you my two cents, Jimmy Fighter. I mean, really. Why <coughs> about it now? It's too late for that. I mean, you're not gonna gain anything. I mean, what are these soccer moms or political co politicians gonna get? Money? Who knows? I don't give a <coughs> shit. All I know is that Christmas is about to be ruined by a bunch of political correctness bullshit <coughs> politicians and <coughs> soccer moms. That's what I see. Seriously. I mean, that to me, that's. The whole thing is just blasphemy. I mean, why should people mess with their traditions? Skinny Santa, Santa saying ha ha ha. Oh, what's next? He's gonna shave his beard or has to ditch the reindeer because of PETA? <sighs> Seriously. This is really ridiculous. I'm tired of this. It's fucking uh, bullshit. Uh, uh, I just wanted to get this straight out because it was really pissing me off. And I hate the fact that there are Santa Clauses that doesn't want to do their job. For example, you see a Santa Claus guy, you see a guy portraying a Santa Claus, and he's too stressed out and all that uh. shit. Well, guess what? If you don't like the job, then get the fuck out. I mean, <sighs> sure, it's not an easy job. But you have to look happy. It's simple. I mean, Jesus. And I also hate the fact that religious extremists are bashing on Santa Claus because he's fictional. He represents commercialism. Well, guess what? Christmas is commercialism, not just Santa Claus alone. You don't realize that. I mean, seriously. The last thing I need to hear is religious extremists bashing on Santa Claus. And also, they say that Santa Claus is only going to get children deceptive. Well, guess what? It's supposed to be fun. Kids should... To me, back then, I used to say that Santa Claus is supposed to be deception. But I don't anymore because, well, obviously, this is stuff for children to know. I mean, seriously, leave the kids alone. Let the kids have fun for Christmas. Seriously. I mean, kids are too young to know about religion right now. And right now, they need a little bit about Santa Claus just for fun, nothing more. And by the way, they're overgloating Santa Claus too much. What the f happened to Jesus Christ? I mean, the whole reason why Christmas existed in the first place was because of the birth of Jesus. Now, the whole public schools are trying to get rid of Christmas songs because to check the separation of church and state. Seriously. Keep religion out of this, seriously. I mean, if you got a Christian that likes to sing Christmas songs, don't let them sing Christmas songs. F in the state of Wisconsin, there's a law in which if you say Merry Christmas, here's what I heard, you're gonna go to jail. That's right, we're saying Merry Christmas. What the f <laughs> So overall, the whole thing about Santa Claus is just getting pointless. Seriously, who gives a fuck? <laughs> If Santa Claus is fat. If Santa Claus is fat, he's fat. It's supposed to represent his jolliness. So guess what, political correctness? Go back to the ho 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 you came from, you dumb bat. Ha ha! You and your little money. And the same goes to sp soccer moms. I'm not sure if soccer moms, are, soccer moms are involved, but still, you're pissing me off with, with your nonsense bullshit. <laughs> All you care about is just getting money and fucking return. This is T4TV, and I just want to say, Merry Christmas. Hello, everybody! T4 here with another rant!
And guess what topic I'm gonna be ranting about again? That's right, it's Cartoon Network! Again! Now shut up and bear with me here, but the subject matter behind Cartoon Network is gonna be a hot topic I issue here. So, uh, let's, let's start this, shall we? <clears throat> okay, so, let's start with, um, with the show that's triggered me to start this rant. Rugrats. Whew, oh boy, what do I start with this one? Okay, so this was originally a pitch to Nickelodeon, but it got rejected due to the executives being a bunch of dumbasses and decided to instead greenlight Girls Gone Wild. I should know. I looked it up on the internet. Okay, so now Rugrats is a show about these babies that don't know anything, and Angelica is the main star of the show. I honestly don't get the title. If you're gonna have a character that stars, oh, I don't know, Angelica, you might as well call your show, I don't know, the, um, the Amanda Show. Oh, wait, shit, I'm sorry. Uh, the Angelica Show. Yeah, that, that, that you know, that, you know, that works too, I guess. Alright, now let's move on to the next show that's attended for a bunch of weeaboos everywhere. The High High Puffy Ami Yumi Um Nico Nico Ni Show. I don't fucking know. This name the title of the fucking show is so confusing as it is. I mean, doesn't Cartoon Network understand that I only can speak American? It's the only language I can understand. Okay, so it's about these band members that's, you know, in a band from Japan, and evidently they are in lesbians for each other. I should know. I have a storyboard for it. This show gets like a 7 out of 10. Because lesbians. Now let me talk about an absolute classic that I adore to bits. It's called Miracle Star. Now, Miracle Star is about this family of goats that live in the magical land of China. Oh, and they have a pet frog too. He's the funny one. Now, while I was growing up watching this show, there's the show that I've been hearing on the internet that there's also another show that's also ripping off from Miracle Star. And get what the title is. It's called The Amazing World of Gumball. Like, what the fuck is this shit? It's just a family of <coughs> 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 Ugh, excuse me, sorry. It's about the it's just about a family of rabbits and cats living together. And for whatever reason, they got a pet goldfish with legs. Now, that doesn't make any sense. Not one single bit. Now, a family of goats with a pet frog that also has legs? That makes total sense. And overall, folks, Gumball's a ripoff and Miracle Star is my favorite OG Cartoon Network show. Now, let me talk about the one big show that everyone's been telling me about since day one when it comes to Cartoon Network, okay? It's called Teen Titans Go A Go Go, I think. I should know, I looked it up on the internet. Okay, so essentially Teen Titans Go A Go Go um, is, about, is essentially just a reboot to the Teen Titans franchise. And a lot of people have given it a lot of criticism towards it. Citing reasons like, oh, the characters are not true to their original designs. It's cheap looking. Everyone's out of character. And that nobody shuts the heck up about waffles. But I don't know about you. I don't know what the heck they're talking about. But I think this show's great. Um, I mean, shit. I even went to go see the movie. Just to hope they, they make season 6 of the original Teen Titans. So yeah, I totally like both. Totally do. Totally do. Totally do. Totally. Okay, so let's jump to the next show. Next up is Donkey Kong Country. Now, there's another good show that got 
unjustifiably cancelled by Cartoon Network. I mean, why would they go out of the way to do such a horrible thing like that? I love the show. A lot. It showers me of coconut cream pies from his expanded dong. I mean, you got characters like Donkey Kong, um, and Donkey Kong Jr., this is Donkey Kong, old ass Donkey Kong, and not Donkey Kong, and many, many more. This show is a part of my childhood because there would be times where whenever I would walk home from school, I would be attacked and assaulted by two pit bull dogs. And after I would get sent to the hospital and be checked for rabies, I would be sitting in my bedroom trying to get a full speed recovery and watch a VHS recording of Expand Thy Dong Country. I'm sorry, that's the ultimate title to the show, but I think it's the Japanese version. I should know. It's from the internet. That must mean it's true. But oh boy, let me talk about the big one. Even bigger than Teen Titans Go. Okay. Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. I know, this show is super old and jazz. But y'all notice how there's like a live stream of the entire series? I mean, what the heck is up with that, man? I mean, you got Billy being the stupid idiot that he is. Mandy being the very stubborn bitch, and Grimm being a total pushover. Now, Hostel Gato, on the other hand, he should have his own show. He's like Cartoon Network's version of Solid Snake from the movie Escape from New York. I mean, how awesome is that? But on the other hand, you have these weird crossover episodes, like... The Grim Adventures of the Kids Next Door? Whose dumb idea was that anyway? I mean, hell, you know what would be the best alternative to, to Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy? Pepper Ann. Disney's Pepper Ann. That once aired on the network. So, Disney! Where's my Pepper Ann? Where's my... Okay, so let's just jump into Adult Swim, because that's part of Cartoon Network, you know, sub-channel and shit like that. Alright, so let's talk about this big one that nobody could shut the heck up about. It's called the Rick and Morty Show featuring the Szechuan Sauce, I think. So, it's about this guy named Dark and... <laughs> it's about this guy named Duck and Marty who go back to the past to go get some obscure sauce from McDonald's from the year 1998. What a stupid premise. I don't see what's so special about that show to begin with. So that's all I got for you all today. And I say this because YouTube's time limit is still 10 minutes per video. Stupid YouTube and their time limits on their videos. This is T4 saying have a nice day, everybody. Now, if you may go, excuse me, let me leave a lovely song for you all. People have no idea. I mean, you people have no idea how infuriated I have to do this rant on Lucky Star. This show, it's... I mean, the show is so... You know, I'm just gonna flat out say it. I am just gonna simply flat out say it. You really wanna know what the... Fuck, I actually think about this show with its cuteness and its so kawaii-ness and the pop culture references and the slice of life genre behind these four characters and, and the other side characters. You wanna know what I fucking think of this show? I'll fucking tell you what I think of this show! I like it. Yeah. I have you all fooled right there, didn't I? But, 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 let me rephrase that, okay? I'm going to be ranting about Lucky Star Rants. The very same rants in which the arguments brought up multiple times are mostly irrelevant or just plain weak. And in this video, I am going to debunk every single argument that Ranners brought up as reasons why they despise this show. In other words, 
This is going to be a little bit controversial. Let's start with the name itself, Lucky Star. Is it just me, or am I really the only one that knows the meaning behind the name? For example, take Random DCE's old Lucky Star rant, and when I mean by old, I really do mean it. Or if you like to call it a handy dandy guide. Now, now, before you or you send your hate mail, let me first state that I like to watch this material. Well, most. I have nothing against him personally. I just felt his arguments on Lucky Star is based on preference, yet at the same time are contradicting. Case in point, Random stated that he's not a fan of Japanese anime and grew up with American cartoons, yet he not only watched Aso Manga Dial, but he stated that he researched Unlucky Star, despite the fact he didn't even know what the name of the show means. Yeah. Now getting back on the subject, um, do you all really, honestly, want to know what the name Lucky Star means? If not, either look it up yourselves like other ranters should, or just let me tell it for you. Seriously, people, it's called fucking Google for a reason. <sighs> the name Lucky Star is a phrase used to express the thought that the star has come into the person's life in such a manner as to be lucky or fortunate for that person. Case in point, THESE CHARACTERS! To my knowledge, this was stated in one episode when three of the main characters were wishing on a star, hence the title. The next argument is the introduction theme song. This is based on a preference, but in general, that shouldn't turn anyone off from watching the program. The purpose of watching a television program, an example being a viewer or reader in this case, is to understand the show under its own context. Apparently, the intro alone, to my knowledge, turns off a few folks. How about, say, watching the whole program before going on a temper tantrum, huh? Personally, it's kinda, well, cute. But then again, I like introductions that are a bit dark as well. If no one likes the intro, that's fine. However, that shouldn't turn them off from watching the show in general. Period. The third common argument is the clone argument. Ugh, all I hear in the arguments that are these are the following. So oh my god, die are clones! Every character looked the time! Ugh. <sighs> Almost every Lucky Star rant talks about this. And, not to sound like an ass or anything, but you're more to even think of such a statement. Not only the physical characteristics of every character look distinctively different, but each has their own personality. In fact, let's look at one character that debunks this whole argument. Take a good look at Miyuki. Yes, or in this case, the pink hair. I'll get to that later. Is there anything remotely different from, say, these three characters presented to you? I want you all to take a wild guess. Pause the video and take a good look and take a guess. Did you guess? You ready? Okay. It's her breast. Her breasts are bigger than those characters. That alone debunks this argument. The point is that she's not a clone and, and so does any other character. And not to also mention, she's actually smarter than several of these characters. While we're on the subject of the characters, this is pretty minor, but I see this as well when it comes to Lucky Star Rants. Every time any ranter brings up the characters, they will refer to the characters by their hair colors. Now, that's fine. If it's the viewer's first time watching the show, and that they're unfamiliar with Japanese names at first, but with a case of ranters making a rant on this show, there's no excuse. In fact, let's look at the first characters you see in this show. The golden guy- wait a minute, this isn't in the script! 
<laughs> I got you fucked up over your lines. Why are you Now, let's look at these characters. Okay, now, let's name these characters. The blue hair is Konata. The two purple hairs, which is Kagami with the ponytails, and the other being Tsukasa. And the pink hair is Miyuki. There. Oh yeah, and the sub versus dub argument when it comes to the show, it's retarded. This whole bullshit is based on personal preference, and this shouldn't be a debate to begin with. Speaking of dubs, I think I may have heard one of the worst female voices in anime. This character is Patty. Don't believe me? Take a listen for yourself. I went to all the sacred places. Sacred places? Yeah, I paid my respects at the three most sacred places in Japan. Did you go to Kamakura, Kyoto, and Nara? Oh, no. I went to Akiba in Tokyo, Ihonashi in Osaka, and also in Nagoya. Girls! Look at that high-fetched voice of Vicky Mouse trying to sound like a girl. Oh, God. <sighs> now... If you don't like the show because it's not your kind of genre, eh, that's fine. The complaints I hear when it comes to the name, not remembering the character's name, and the stupid clones argument are examples of such poor evidence to clarify why Lucky Star is not the type of show they will watch. This is something that an immature teenager would do. Before I end this video, though, I have a simple request for you all. Anyone can ter participate. If you ever watch Lucky Star with knowledge behind the show, I want you to make a video response, or hey, even a comment about your thoughts on Lucky Star. And what I mean by thoughts, I mean valid complaints, criticisms, evidence, the pros and the cons behind the show. I simply want your honest opinion on the show that has valid points. In other words, I don't want to hear stupid shit like, no, they're cold in the soul. No. Fuck that. Share with me your thoughts. That's all. Not all of you have to do it. The question is, what do you think? Alright. Remember my last video where I told everyone to leave Cybertoad the fuck alone? Well, apparently, I checked through his channels, and despite that, he, some of the materials he took belonged to me. I didn't give a damn, because I did the same thing, and I thought that later on, he would do some original stuff. Well, apparently, I was wrong. Recently, he made a video on Alpha and the Chipmunks, pretty much the same shit that I've done. In fact, some of his videos, he says the same shit that I have said in my videos. This wouldn't be much of a problem if he said something original stuff that I have not said. In his Sonic Genesis review, he stated that he had a glitch in which he was floating and he was just stand floating there or something like that. He had to turn the whole system off. I didn't mind him reviewing the game, but here's but here were some of the problems in several of his videos. I'm gonna say right now. Go ahead. Oh yeah, I got Dizzy Zap with me. This is a co-op rant. I'm just gonna let him speak up his mind for it. So people, I look. All right. Talking, talking, ranting, doing whatever about the same thing. It's okay and all, but at least make it original. Do it in your own style. Don't have basically the whole entire same thing like someone else. Like this is going on. Now we're gonna talk about the similarity that's going on between Cybertoad and T4 over here. Then we're just gonna get down to how his videos are and my thoughts. So continue, T4. All right. How do I put this? One more thing. Oh. If you guys hear background noise, I'm terribly sorry. Really, I could hear it too. We still have no idea how, why, or how is that happening. So sorry. Go ahead. All right, continue on. All right, Cybertoad. If you're listening, I just want everybody know, I'm not bashing on Cybertoad, okay? I'm just giving this guy, quote-unquote, 
constructive criticism. I'm not bashing on him. I don't even know how the hell how old he is. He sounds like he's six years old, but I don't know what the heck his age is. Mm -hmm. So I have no right to bash on him or anything. So here's what I'm trying to say. Number one, he has got to stop repeating himself. In his subway video, Jesus fucking Christ, no offense, kid. But do you have to repeat the same shit? Look, I know I did in my videos, but that was a long ass time ago. And you don't have to repeat the same shit. People got your point, and if you keep repeating the same crap, then people are going to be disapproved of it. Think of it this way. Take the Joker from The Dark Knight, for example. The guy would constantly say, Do you know how I got these scars? The first time we heard it, it was cool. But when he said it over and over again, it just, the joke got it owed. That was a prime example of what you're doing, Severtoad. Seriously, no offense, but seriously, get rid of repetition. It really gets fucking owed. Number two. Um, maybe you could kind of script your rants because there's a whole bunch of long pauses between these things. I mean, you're saying, oh my god, guys, and then three minutes later, you continue on. You should script them, at least, just so you know what you're doing or whatever. That's it. Hell, even RMA21 told me this. He tells me that I procrastinate some of my videos, and I can understand why. I looked at some of my old videos, my game reviews on it, and I hesitate, and I completely understand that. So I sit in my own words and try to put it in my own thoughts without hesitating, and it works. So if I could do that, maybe you could try to do the same. Again, for these people thinking, oh my god, you're bashing a shepherd toad. Listen, I'm not bashing on the kid, okay? He just needs to learn from me and from several other people that it's all right to be inspired by somebody like me or Cullen 3000 or Darkness the Curse or Big O or any other fucking ranter or game reviewer on YouTube. But taking someone's style is completely different. I mean, come on, Loke. He's got the MS Pain thing. Several of his rants are the same thing, like T4. Yes, I Come Especially on, some of his some of his friends, he says the same sh I don't mean to repeat myself, but just for these people that are just ignoring the fact that he's, he's saying the same thing, let me clarify it. He does say the same fucking thing. He even said, where the heck is Elvin's hat? Well, guess what? I said the same thing as fucking well. I know it's not a big deal, but seriously, it just shows an example that this kid, to me, in my opinion, has no ideas on what to write about. He looks at some of my videos, and he will just think of something in his own words on what he thinks of it. He just takes the video, he just puts it in his own words, puts it in so much procrastination, and puts so much minimal effort, it's not even funny. I mean, come on, guys. Isn't it obvious? BTV, T4 TV, Cybertoad, Cyberwolf, what more proof do you want? I mean, I got, I have nothing else to say. I don't know. Oh, let me check. He also did, if I'm correct, he did a countdown. I mean, I got no problems with the kid. He says he needs to improve a lot. I mean, a whole fucking lot. Oh, yeah, one other thing. Kid, no offense, improve your mic quality. I keep hearing this. <laughs> Seriously, kid, no offense, seriously. I don't mean to offend you, but seriously, you have got to improve your mic quality, okay? It's going to piss up some people off, and really, it's just, you have got to improve it. It gets annoying as hell every time you say a word with S or T and A, it goes like, <laughs> it's annoying, man. Just move, move your mic or fix it, get something new. Or... Maybe just don't have the mic too fucking close to your mouth. Or use a built-in mic. Those work even better. Mm, probably, yeah. I mean, here's some of the things he ran it. Spam and chain letters. Dial-up. Television. Five facts about myself. Well, that's understandable. But he also did... Um, where the hell is it? Um, I have no idea what else he did. Oh, yeah, he did Naruto. 
He did, uh, what else did he, shit, what else did he fucking do? I now take requests. He has the same freaking, <laughs> the same picture that I took with these papers. You know, the paper, stuck a pile of papers that I was trying to read through. Same animation style. I mean, seriously though. The problem with this kid is that he can't think of anything original to begin with. Sure, inspiration is one thing, but again, it's no excuse for you to take my work and just, and that's all you can do. Just take people's work upon your channel and that's it. Now again, there's nothing wrong with ranting about the same thing or whatever. But if you look very closely, you can find a lot of similarities, okay? And I bet you anything, this is probably going to start E-Drama! And, and I know we're going to get near to the 10 minute limit, even though we're around like 8 minutes and two, 32 seconds, but I need to conclude this very fast. I don't want people to think I'm bashing on Cybertoad, okay? Me neither. <clears throat> because... We're not bashing on. We're not telling him, oh my god, you suck. We're not, okay? We don't even know how old the fucking kid is. We're just trying to give advice and maybe help out a bit. And just saying, you could try and improve better and do your own thing. And it's just been aggravating us. Hell, I saw... In no offense, Cybertoad. Your BTV poop is probably one of the worst videos I've ever seen in my life. It's constructive criticism. You could have put so much effort into it. You never had any single sound effect. You didn't put much effort into your voice acting. And furthermore, you didn't... Oh my god. This is that you used some of the same generic ideas as before. To me, you're the irate gamer of my channel. You are. It's so fucking obvious. Think about it. You have the same fucking rants as I do. You take the same fucking animation style. And for God's sake, you keep repeating the same shit that I would usually do. Stop it, okay? Seriously. I want you to do something original. Originality. Sure, I... And people are going to say, Well, you ripped off some people. Well, yeah, but that was a long-ass time ago. And people need to realize that I'm trying to do something new. Case in point, my Michael Jackson Moonwalk review. I did it original in a way. So people, stop making a big deal out of it. Ugh, okay, I had to let it out. Because it's been pissing me off. It's been pissing my friend Dizzy Zap off. We know how he feel about this shit. I already stated my thoughts on it. Dizzy Zap, please. Okay, I just want to say, kid, you got to, like, learn to do something, okay? It's too many similarities. Try and improve yourself, okay? Think of some better ideas. You're probably a smart kid. Come on. You probably have, have some great ideas or whatever. Just for, just for God's sake, kid. Just improve. Important thing, improve, get better mic, because people are going to get We're it about right. to run out of time, so later, guys. See ya. When I was a child, I was carefree. So carefree, I would play video games just for fun. Now that I'm an adult, I occasionally play video games. And hey, so does everyone. Sadly though, I feel the majority of gamers just love to do one thing when it comes to video games. Bitching. For example, the whole Sonic's eye color fiasco. I would bet you that nostalgic nutfucks didn't buy Sonic 4 based on that pointless flaw. How about the lack of Kremlings in Donkey Kong Country Returns? A bunch of purists are stirring up a storm about how this game is not nostalgic enough just because there's no such enemies. Or even Goldeneye. No Pierce Brosnan with Modern Twist? No buy for the purist. Or even Kirby's epic yarn. Gameplay is tolerable, graphics are gorgeous, just one problem. It's too easy that even a pussy could beat it. These were the titles I bought, except for Sonic 4, because I heard it on the internet, and thoroughly enjoyed throughout my leisure activity. And these are what I hear on the internet all the fucking time. What bothers me about gamers from my point of view is that no matter what any development team does to cater to the fans, they're still...
gonna bitch and moan about stupid shit like this. Let's take this scenario for example. Remember when Nintendo was catering to mostly casual gamers? Yeah, most of us weren't happy about it. Nintendo decided to balance that though with recent releases of first party and even third party titles that caters to those fans. Now that Nintendo has done that, what did the fans respond to that? More bitching and moaning. Oh my god! Kingville isn't in the game! I'm not gonna buy this game! The online and golden eye lags! And shaky for for the win! Kirby's too easy! I want to suck Kirby and steal the powers! <laughs> Shut up! Seriously, come on! I mean, when we look at Kirby, why is it that the games are easy to even begin with? Simple. They're for kids. Kids that want to get started in video games. CHILDREN! And you adults in your late 20s are bitching about the difficulty set in the game when the game is targeted to these kids. Use your head! I mean, look at Kirby's Dreamland. Most of the time, you float as well as for the fact that you can't steal abil abilities from enemies. And nobody bitched about it back then. Because we, we didn't give a shit. And as for K. Rule, he's about as generic as any dick-headed villain. All he does is steal bananas just to be a total dick. Nothing else. There's barely any development from that character's background. He's just like Waluigi. Waluigi is only in the Mario games just for kart racing and sports titles. Nothing else. I could care less for K. Rule because he shouldn't be the reason why I'm not enjoying Donkey Kong Country Returns. And I really like that game. I also fucking hate Fantards that looks at a game trailer and they cry a river about it. Why bitch about the trailer when you haven't played the game? I'm sorry, I know that's been said multiple times by other users, but at this point, this must be stated otherwise. Just try the game out, and if you don't like it, good for you. What bothers me about those complaints is how they're not valid. If gamers wish to find something critically wrong with a certain game, they need strong supporting details that raises their credibility in what they're talking about. For example, Super Smash Bros. Brawl. I stated this in my DeviantArt account and I fucking hated the online multiplayer because it barely works for me. At all. I can't even enjoy one simple match without lagging so badly. And I'm using a wireless internet connection for crying out loud. The point I'm getting across is, is that several gamers can't even enjoy a good title with such stupid flaws. I play a game to have fun, not to bitch like a spoiled 10 year old living in Beverly Hills. It's okay to point out flaws that we notice in good titles, but that shouldn't even ruin the game in general unless the game is either boring or unplayable. But no. All several gamers want to do is bitch and 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 well you get the idea. Why am I talking about Toys R Us today? Well if nobody got the news, the company has announced that they are going to be liquidizing all of their inventories in all US and UK stores. Actually, hold that thought. Hey Jeffrey, how are you holding up? I'm gonna miss you. $39.99. I'm gonna miss you too. <laughs> ah, I'll be fine. As for Canada though, it's not certain, but considering the condition of the company right now, as of this video by the way, it's likely inevitable that it'll close, but the question still remains. Why? How did the biggest toy store in the world sunk so low? 
Well, I'm not a business major, nor am I knowledgeable about the subject matter of how a company runs in business, but I'm going to explain it the best I can. As far as I can understand, it's partially due to digital competition, namely Amazon and the company's own inability to capture e-commerce dollars, which is interesting because Toys R Us has had an online presence since the late 90s slash early 2000s and their presence was pretty strong for the most part. Hence why the phrase partially is used in this given context. Mismanagement is also to blame. Toys R Us is saddled with billions in debt in a leveraged buyout. What is it you ask? Well, basically a private company buys a portion of the total cost of the company and is still in debt temporarily. They will still own a company through the portion of the company, but still has to pay through the remaining total cost of the buyout and you have to pay it back through a series of years. If you don't, well, pretty much your company as well as the company you purchase is kind of screwed. But overall, Toys R Us has spent more than $250 million per year to pay back the $5 billion in long-term debt. These repayments became pretty much at this point unsustainable once revenue started to decline consistently. And it left them with pretty much with one option. Declare bankruptcy and renegotiate the terms of its debt. Now, another reason that some people claim that the reason why Toys R Us is going down the shitter is because of those Darsh Guard kids and their computer screens. It's easy to pin the blame on kids these days when it comes to technology or tablets or smartphones. I mean, shoot, I remember actually going to a Disney World of all places and I seen one kid have a 3DS. Every other kid that I bumped into since going through all those lines and walking from one ride to another, I either see a tablet or some parent's smartphone. Or it could be that maybe kids don't even know which toys are out there through advertising, especially on cable television. I mean, shoot, even last year it was reported that with millennials watching far less television than they used to, young parents and their, well, children simply aren't seeing the commercials that toy makers rely on to market their new products. And can you really blame them? <laughs> So now that I went over the reasons why Toys R Us is going downhill and is going bankrupt, people are probably wondering how I feel about it as a whole and what I think about Toys R Us today. Well, the funny thing is that I recall Toys R Us and yet at the same time it's not the biggest impact of my childhood. I always kind of see Toys R Us as the toy store for rich kids. I rarely go inside of it because my family never has the time to even stop by over there. It's either a Walmart or the local mall that we usually go to from time to time. Plus, why spend over $20 on one toy when I can just go to a McDonald's, get a Happy Meal set with a meal and a toy? The last time I was even at a Toys R Us when I was a kid was between 1996 to 1998. I don't know when exactly I went to a Toys R Us, but the other last time I went there was, well, literally over a year and a half ago. And the last time I went there, it was practically empty inside. My friends and I even went to Toys R Us during Black Friday and it wasn't as crowded as the other stores that we all went to. And yet the Sears located close to where Toys R Us is, is still running despite the fact that the company isn't doing too well either. So, overall, 
As much as I don't have much memories with Toys R Us as a lot of people around my age have done back in the day, I'm kind of going to miss Toys R Us, but I'm not going to lament on it about the same time for the rest of my life because in reality there's more to life than just a toy store that had a legacy. As long as you have the memories that you can cherish about the place, that's really all that matters. Yeah, it's going to suck that we can't go back into those places anymore, except for Canada. God freaking dang it. But I think the important factor to consider is the fact that we remember those experiences and we passed down those memories from kid generation to kid generation. I mean, shoot, maybe in the next hundred years, there's going to be virtual stores where you can buy anything virtual. Whatever your heart truly desires or something. I don't know. I'm not a futurist or anything. Sheesh. I mean, come on. It's not like anybody's gonna seriously lament about the loss of Toys R Us or anything. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Oh, no. Oh, hell no. Squeakers! Squeakers! I need you to do a rant on this guy! Squeakers? Oh yeah, I haven't seen him in uh, almost six years. Wonder where the hell he is? Ah, oh well. Then if he may go, excuse me, I'm gonna look of old commercials for Toys R Us. Cause it's like, I got nothing else better to do. <laughs> PLEASE DON'T LET ME DO A RAND ON THIS ERIC GUY! Today's video is gonna be about, um, one person I hate on YouTube right now. And we all know. He's supposed to be this homosexual guy, which we all hate. And, uh, right now he's hated mostly on YouTube. So, <clears throat> what I can say is that, I'll give you the name of him. Uh, his name is supposed to be Chris Crocker. And he's well known for famous releasing this video called Leave Britney Alone. And it really pissed me off. And finally, Where's the first turn of the I'm dead serious! If you don't turn on the other I'm gonna step into a cat! Turn that off! Thank you. Hello, um, once again, this is T4. I'm not right there! It's what I'm in the time of a spin! And we're here to talk about one person and one person only. And it's Chris Crocker. Not that Chris Crocker! I mean that Chris Crocker! Alright. We all know him, and for those of you who don't know, he's this. He's now an internet celebrity, and, uh. Which. He's supposed to be open, openly gay guy who's known on YouTube in my space and he's a edutainer who produces and acts in transgressive videos his own vlogs some of them are random bullshit while the other one like leave Britney alone is hitting over 1 million views which probably brings to the point that the reason why he's getting so many views in all his videos is because of Leave Britney Alone. So, that could be that one cost a point, in a way. One, here's two of the reasons why I hate him, and there's more, but I can't explain that, but here's my two primary reasons why I hate Chris Crocker so much. One, he's a bad example to the gay community, and he's making the gays look bad. He's just, he looks like that he's make, that's what the gays are. Which they're not. There's, <clears throat> there's some gays I met in my high school. I didn't like them at first, but I got along with them a little bit. Um, I met one of them in, in my music class. Um, as far as I would know about it. So, but I don't care if anyone's gay or anything. I just what matters is who I care for in a way. And secondly, he's supporting one of the biggest whores in Hollywood history. And now, I LIKE THAT CHURCH! Who the hell?
hell are you? My name is Pet Pepper! Pet Pepper! Pet Pepper! Pet Pepper! Well, can't you see I'm in the middle of a rant? Um, I'm very busy with people right now, and. I like nachos! Stop Sorry about that, but anyways, um, he supports Britney Spears, probably one of the biggest whores in the world has ever known. And plus, during his Leave Britney Alone video, he's saying stupid comments, in which, for example, that she's making money for you and all that stuff. And later on in the video, you're gonna see clips in which I find to be the stupidest lines. No, not the stupidest lines, but the stupidest series that he has said in a video in my opinion about it oh yeah and here's the other reason I hate Chris Cocker he's one of the many idiots in the internet world where he's getting so many views while many talented video makers are left in the fucking dust there I said it and it's the fucking damn truth and will you shut up yes please leave yes no, seriously, leave the room! Yes! Excuse me. Get out of here! Get out of here! Get out of my room! Get out of my room! Get out of my room! Okay, um... Very sorry for what happened, but mainly, um, there's been so many parodies based on Leave Britney Alone, and the reason why he's getting so many views on all of his videos was not only because of that, but, but because how much of an idiot and moron he is. Oh, wait, I take those back. I like to call him a douchebag on steroids. And, uh, like I said, here's the following footages from this. Here's one of the first, before I show you the Leave Britney Alone video, let me show you one of his videos in which his it's his response to the uh, Chris Crocker haters. Oh god, this is gonna suck ball. Here it is. A lot of people don't like me. That's okay. The more haters, the merrier. But if you don't like me, I have something to say to you. Kiss my ass, and don't just kiss my ass. Eat my good old cornhole. Um, uh, I'm sorry, but repeat what the fuck you just said. Eat my good old cornhole. Just. Say. Cornhole! Okay, before I go on with this video clip, um, what, if you don't know what the term cornhole means, I actually found out what it's supposed to mean in the first place. When I went to a encyclopedia website known as Wikipedia, I recognized that a cornhole is actually a slang term for anus. The reason why it's called cornhole is because corn cobs were often used in outhouses in lieu of toilet paper. In other words, corn cobs were used as toilet paper in outhouses. And I'm very sorry if I disgusted you by any chance. I didn't mean to. Now, anyways, um, back to your um, regular programming. 
Seriously, what the fuck is he on? It's just ridiculous. Ugh. Okay, I'm done. No, not, I'm not done with the video. I'm just done with yelling and screaming. That's all. Because it's really pissing me off. Now, now um, that I'm done with um, doing a rant on that one video clip, I will show you the Leave Me Britney Alone clips. Some of the things he said on the video which really pissed me off. Here is the footage. Warning. The following footage will contain a lot of idiocracy. And how fucking dare anyone out there make fun of Brittany after all she's been through. She lost her aunt. She went through a divorce. She had two fucking kids. Her husband turned out to be a user, a cheater, and now she's going through a custody battle. Okay, first of all, I want to make something clear it out. One, she broke up with him. Not that Kevin guy. She did. On live television. On a talk show. And when he heard about it, it broke his heart. So it serves her right for treating him like that. I mean, isn't it wrong to do that to someone you love? It's just bullshit. I can't believe that she would even do that. Well, after all, she's a whore, so moving on. All you people care about is readers and making money off of her. She's a human! Holy shit! That scared the shit out of me! And we're making money off of her? What the hell are you talking about? She's making money out of herself! When are you, when are you making money out of her? Uh, the reason why she's becoming like this in the first place is because she's a fucking idiot! Don't you fucking realize that? God! Moving on! What you don't realize is that Britney's making you all this money and all you do is write a bunch of cr What?! She's not making us one damn fucking cent! When- How is she giving us money? It doesn't make sense! How is she giving us money? You said that we're making money out of her, now you're saying that Britney Spears is give, making all this money for us. First of all, she's a whore and she's not making us one goddamn cent. Period. Crap about her. She hasn't performed on stage in years. Oh, gee. I wonder why. Maybe because she's going through all this shit because all that shit she's been going through is her goddamn fault in the first place. Like, she divorced Kevin and she can't see her kids pretty much because of what she done and because of the court order and all that shit. Plus, she cut her own hair off and um, oh yeah, and she was using uh, some object to hit someone's car. Yeah, that's probably why she hasn't performed on stage for years because she's a fucking douchebag. Just like you are, Chris. You're the fucking douchebag. Her song is called Give Me More for a reason because all you people want is more, 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 more! Yeah, give me more shame and ridicule. That's what she wants. I mean, it's her fault for committing such bullshit in what she did in the first place. Plus, um, I don't mean to act like one of those people who blames on the media, but to me, in my honest opinion, I know it would be the parents' fault for not watching over their daughters, but the... But in my honest opinion, the girls are looking up to Britney Spears as a pop idol. In which she's not. She's just one of these... To me, she's just a prostitute, in my honest opinion. Because she, she takes up after um, Paris Hilton, who is also a whore. God, there are so many women in Hollywood, like Britney Spears, that are actually whores. I'm not saying all women in Los Angeles are whores. I'm just saying that these people are bad examples of imagery and all that other bullshit. But continuing on with the video clip. Leave her alone! Hmm, let me think about it. Eeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
inspiring some of the girls in our lives today to be more like her. And to me, that's just a strain of who we are today as people. But hey, that's my opinion, so. Let him be alone! I told you no, and God, you're more annoying than Fred Fredberger. Fred Fredberger! 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 Fred Yes! Leave the room. Yes! Go. Yes! Excuse me. Fred Fredberger! I thought I told you to leave, you- One more fucking interruption, and I'm gonna fuck fuck bigger. Okay, once more. professionalism and said if Britney was a professional she would have pulled it off no matter what. Okay, what profession does she have? I mean, she's supposed to be a singer and I know she's coming up with an album, but how is she a professional when she's screwing up? Just because you're a professional doesn't mean you're perfect. That's what Chris is trying to say. It sounds like he's trying to say that being a professional means you're perfect. No, it's not. And it's the fucking damn truth. Speaking of professionalism, when is it professional to publicly bash someone who's going through a hard time? Okay, to those of you who doesn't know what the hell he's talking about, I think he's talking about the paparazzi, and mainly it's a professional job in which they take news on uh, celebrities um, either going through a good time or through a bad time. I mean, it's part of their job. I mean, if they don't do their job, they get fired. And speaking of that, there shouldn't be news about celebrities, personally, because, I mean, there's just so many magazines based on imagery, and so many people are getting focused on that. And, like I said, the reason why there's some women out there that wants to be like Britney is because of that. It's because of imagery. Um, but... You don't have to take my comment for that, so... Moving on. Leave Benny alone! In the name of all the great old media and all the best shit going on in the world, I say HELL NO! I ain't gonna listen to you because you're becoming an idiot. And you sound like you're worshipping her. And speaking of that, why are you worshipping someone that just broke up uh, her own boyfriend uh, does not know how to become a good parent and is going through making st st stupidest mistakes that anyone could have achieved. Why in God's name are you worshipping her? You should be not, you should not be wasting your time worshipping someone that has a, it's a bad imagery to the public view. And did you see how weird she, she sounded? Remember, let, let me replay that again. <laughs> wow, sounds like Satan um, watching a soap opera based on Britney Spears. Please! <laughs> Leave Britney Spears alone right now! Um, uh, let me think. Uh, let me see. Oh, uh, how do I put this in women's terms? Um,. How about... No! I mean it. Anyone who has a problem with her, you deal with me. Oh, no! I'm being 
threatened by a homosexual internet celebrity named Chris Crocker who's worshipping a whore named Britney Spears. Oh no! Whatever shall I do? Uh, yeah, you ain't gonna do shit. Because you're wasting your time, dear God. Because she's not well right now. <laughs> The reason why she's not doing so well is because she's making herself not look so well. It's her fault! And let me finish off one video before I do my overall view of Chris Crocker. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh, shut up! There's nothing to eat in this house! So? No, I don't want to! Get away from me! Nothing in that refrigerator that I would eat! There's hot dogs, but I don't like hot dogs. I like healthy foods, so what am I to do? I don't give a damn about your eating habits! I don't give a damn! Uh, overall, don't listen to this douchebag, and Chris Cocker offers, you're wasting a fucking time supporting a fucking douchebag! Good night, have a nice fucking day! Trash talk, the kind of talk a gamer uses to egg on his enemies while trying to save the planet from alien invasion. Oh, I'll kill you the but this talk is different. This talk is filled with ugly racial slurs, anti Semitic rhetoric, homophobic chat, sexual innuendo. <laughs> it's the kind of talk that is not acceptable anywhere in polite society. I hate I hate Jude. And guess who's listening? Your children. Oh my god! You know, if there's one thing we really hate about Fox News, is how they bash on video games. Most likely, mass media are bashing on it most recently because parents do not, who don't know how to shit how to raise their kids, they want to blame it on video games. In the news, here's a story about it, and they do the same freaking thing. I don't know that, soccer moms watch this shit. Usually. I don't even watch much of the news anymore, but I used to. Anyways, the video you just saw, this was a Fox News um, segment on Xbox Live. Yeah, they're a fashion on an online community service where you play games like Halo 3 online. Why? Because they're afraid that little Timmy is going to be scarred for life just for hearing racist slurs. Well, apparently, it's part of life. You're going to see, hear people once in a while. But that's not the point. They, the following video you're going to see, their information is just freaking flawed. I swear to God. Alright, the following video you're about to see is bullshit. So, this video is going to be split. I think, which means it's not meant for children. So, mainly, your discretion is advised, so that way soccer moms won't bash on me for no apparent reason. Okay, here it goes. Let's begin now. I don't know. It's the most popular game now on the market, Halo 3. For you parents totally out of the loop, here's how it works. Your children can play the game by themselves, Wait, 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 wait. Parents, they bought these games for their kids. I'm what I mean by kids. I mean the five year old kids, but because seriously, I saw YouTube videos and I heard here little kids saying vagina, uh or the N word and shit like that, and I thought, what the hell? I mean, this is what happens. Parents who bought an inverted game to a five-year-old is going to result to this shit. And mainly, it's the parents' fault because the parents don't know what the hell is in this game. They don't know. Because they don't read the manual, they don't know how to use parental controls, and then finally, they don't, you don't know how to use voice chat options. Oh, I can't believe it. Parents, they really pissed me off to this day. As they don't know how to raise their kids. It's rated M for a fucking reason. Oh, wait a minute. In the whole news segment, 
They haven't mentioned that Halo 3 is rated M. I'm dead freaking serious. Watch the whole video. But moving on. Online with just their friends, or actually carry on a conversation with faceless, nameless opponents over a headset. Online games like Xbox. Wait a fucking minute. What did he just say? Online games like Xbox. Online games like Xbox. Online games like Xbox. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry, but the reason why I'm laughing, their information is so fucking hard. It's so stupid. Alright, the so-called news anchor who said, Oh, Xbox Live is a game. Let me tell you something. It is an online community service. Period. Not a video game. Playing Halo 3 online. Is a video game. I mean, seriously, in order to ha play online, you need Xbox Live and a broadband connection. Uh, seriously, this is so stupid. <laughs> he called it Xbox Live a game when it's mainly an online community service, and I still can't get over it. It's so stupid. I mean, Jesus, God. But, oh god, this is ridiculous. Moving on. God. Allow you to play with anyone from around the world. That's part of its appeal and part of the problem. The reason why it's part of the problem is because of parents who do not know how to raise their fucking kids. <clears throat> and besides, the, a child cannot buy an M rated video game, nor a teen rated video game if they're under the age of 10. The, I mean, the chorus cannot sell in the game because it's the national law. But if the parents bought the game for themselves, it wouldn't be the parents' fault. But if the parent bought it for their kid that's around like five years old, that's the parents' fault. And if they're worried that little Timmy's going to be scarred for life because of racial slurs, you t then the kid has to know the truth. I mean, the hard truth. And to tell him to just ignore it a little bit. Well... This is how I see it. But basically, t if if you have a child that hears this stuff, tell that your child to either ignore it or simply put, use the voice chat option, which you can turn it off. Simple as that. Or better yet, parents should know about how to use the Xbox 360's parental controls. If they want to buy the game for their own, except for the kids, and the kid wants to play it, they can set parental control so the kid will play it. But no, they don't know any better. The parents don't know shit these days. Moving on. Play online, you risk hearing this. Damn, I wish Hitler would have succeeded. Hope you die in a terrorist attack. <laughs> okay, I'll just state a little bit one thing. I played Xbox Live on my friend's xbox 360 and throughout my whole online experiences never have i heard of these racial slurs <clears throat> i mean there's like a in my estimate number 40 to 50 percent chance of you hearing this and fox news is claiming that oh you're gonna hear this all the fucking time no you won't that depends that depends on the users that you're listening to and you can actually block the users who's saying that stuff, so you don't have to hear their little bullshit. And you can record their audio and send the bungee for complaints. It's possible. Yes, we have technology. We can do it. But parents who don't know shit about it, they will be the fall of our society. Not all parents who know how to raise their kids. I mean the parents who don't know shit about them, how to raise their kids. Ugh. Moving on, please. Moving on, moving on. Michael Sullivan is an inspector for the Illinois Attorney General's office. There is no silver bullet that's going to kill everything out there. There's no extra software. It still comes down to the best defense for a child is an active parent. Thank you, Mr. Anonymous Guy. It's the parents who should monitor the kids on what they play. 
or watch or listen to. I mean, if you don't want your kids to listen to it, then don't. But don't bash on everyone else because of it. Ugh. <clears throat> I mean, it's really ridiculous. I mean, parents don't know shit about this. And I think the guy who said, the only way to stop this is for an active parent. I mean, the kids, I mean, the parents should watch over their kids. It's just so simple as that. I mean, how to be an active parent? One, look at the ESB, ESRB rating system. Two, look at the movie rating system. Or three, look at all the content in which you're going to be watching, reading, or listening to. And according to rumors, according to time itself, you can hear five-year-olds or eight, seven-year-olds listening to rap. Even Soldier Boy. I mean, what I read on Radio Disney, the mo one of the most popular artists right now is Soldier Boy. You mean, Crank That Soldier Boy, in which it has sex sexual slurs in it is a popular song on Radio Disney. I'm not really sure and I don't really want to get into it. I don't want to get into this Radio Disney bull crap and listen to it because I hate this song with a passion. <sighs> Moving on, I'm sorry that I changed the subject. So, let's head south now. Xbox has a complete list of directions to set parental controls on a web page, but first a parent needs to figure out how to work the game controller before sorting through the guidelines. Show of hands, how many know how to implement the parental control on the Xbox? Nobody does. Didn't know there was one. I didn't know there was one. <laughs> oh my god. Here's the excuse. <laughs> I don't know how to use the Xbox 360 controller. The fuck was that? I don't know how to use the Xbox 360 Oh, have you tried reading the manual? It's not hard. I mean, that's their excuse. There's a manual in there for you to read. So that way, you can set parental controls, or you can set voice chat options. But no, you think it's one of your Atari 2600 video game systems. Well, no. The reason why... Game, we have games like this. It's called Technical Progress. It's very simple, people. Moving on. Well, oh, this is going to get good. <laughs> Didn't know there was one. I knew there was one, but I would have to have Alex show me how to use it. I didn't know he had one! Oh my god! Every product you can buy, there is always a freaking manual. Bluetooth earphones, mouses, keyboards, even computers, video game consoles, even video game cartridges or CDs, there's manuals in there. Why is there a manual in there? It's there to be read so that the parents can know what type of game that the kids are going to play. And I must ask the parents, why didn't you read the freaking manual? When we first spoke with these parents, they heard some of the language. Something slips out once in a while. But they said they never expected the racial slurs. <laughs> you, 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 oh, you, monkey. And frankly, neither did we. How many of you guys, while playing Xbox Live, have heard the F-bomb? Yeah, definitely. Have you? Yeah. Like all the time. Yeah. All the time? Yeah. You should hear some of the language that's on there. Really? Oh my god. I heard it today. You heard it today. You just kind of ignore it. You get used to it. Okay. Apparently, they're just teenagers. But the big problem is just little kids who actually play on Xbox Live. But you're talking to teenagers. I don't know the real age. But however, what was the point of Fox News saying that your children are listening to it when they're interviewing teenagers. They should be interviewing little kids that actually play this game. And yeah, there are little kids who play Xbox Live. Well, it through the on who I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm a little sorry, but they played Halo 3 through Xbox Live on Xbox 360 and they say words in which they should not say, like vagina for example. My point with this part is just that they're not interviewing little kids, they're just interviewing teenagers. So what was the point of them saying, your ch children are listening to it, if they're interviewing teenagers? Make up your mind, Fox News! 
So what's a parent to do? Limit play to friends and neighbors? But if it's just your friends, just the friends you know, would that be okay? Yeah, but what if they're not on and you can't play? It'd be more boring. Yeah. One way to censure? Eliminate the voice option. Wow! After all the scary drama on this news story, Fox News finally tells the fucking truth to dumbass parents to turn off the voice chat. With the voice chat option, are you getting this, parents who don't know how to raise their kids? Get it through your skulls. Get it memorized. Got it, Axel? Thank you. Anyways, moving on. I said no because I like to meet new people and, like, learn stuff about them, like, where they're from and, yeah. Okay, maybe not. The fact is that age-old advice, never talk to strangers, doesn't work here. We need to constantly be educating the children as to the fact that each new piece of technology brings with it new dangers, new lessons that the children have to learn to be safer online. In Texas, a woman enticed credit card information out of some young boys. In Ohio, a middle school was locked down after a teen threatened to bring a gun to school after an Xbox Live chat. In Missouri, a gamer using the name Devil Devlin turned out to be a sexual predator who kidnapped two young boys. In California, a man molested a 14-year-old boy he met through Xbox Live. Oh my freaking god! After saying the full truth, they changed the story and said stuff relating to Xbox Live. News stories on uh, old oh, school shootings or oh, credit card fraud. Are you shitting me? After all that talk, you still want to change the story only related to Xbox Live. Uh, it's, it's, you're still bashing on saying, Oh, Xbox Live is evil. No, it's not. It's an online community service, and some of the users who have mental issues should not use it. Oh. But let's hear what the bullshit they say. Yays! Yet none of this has hurt sales or stopped teens from waiting in long lines for the latest exploits of Halo 3. Sales projected to be $1 billion very soon. So again, what's a parent to do? Oh man, I'm gone. Tell your kids if they hear offensive talk, report it. Xbox offers its own internal policing procedures. And if nothing else works, hit the mute button. Uh, let's review parents. One, parental controls. Set them up, you lazy hacks. Two, turn off the voice chat. You can turn it off, possibly on Halo 3, or any other Xbox 360 live video games. And finally, monitor your kids for God's sake! Oh, God. There you go. That was the whole video. Shit. That was the whole video you saw. And the story is just ridiculous. The only man that was right the whole freaking time was that old guy. I mean, he knew that the only, the only way for kids to advance in life is an active parent. I mean, how hard is it for a parent to set up parental controls? Oh, more importantly, how hard is it for a parent, a single parent, or just parents, to read the manual so they can know how to set the controls on their console or more than that how hard is it to read the rating system it's on the front of the back uh, it's on the front cover of the video game that you're about to buy even on the back it says so but no parents don't give a shit thus this results to Fox News bullshit on the debate on video games and how it's evil and shit like that if you want to see more Fox News bullshit on video games, try clicking Fox News about video games. You'll find many of them, believe me. Especially the ones in which Darkness ranted about. It's ridiculous. And I used to watch it at times, and it had a topic on video games. And yet they bash on it. That reminds me of a hypocrite. And to be honest, there is a person I know in which one of their mothers, I mean, I'm sorry, but my friend's mother actually does not know how to turn on an Xbox. That's all right. As long as you read the manual, it's okay. No offense to my friend here. 
And just out of the corner, if they did this on Halo 3 along with Xbox Live, why didn't they do the same on Halo 2? I mean, there's other online games on Xbox Live in which you can talk. How come Fox News didn't cover this? Because they want to talk about Xbox Live and they think it's a video game. When mainly, it's just an online community service! <sighs> I'm done with this rant. Have a nice day! I just found a really well-written article of Anus. And it's about violent video games again! And here's what the title says. Violent video games bad for mental health. Wait. Are you fucking... Okay, that's it. Junior fan, does it go here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Alright, we're Where's basically gonna read... We're basically yeah. gonna read through this damn article, and we're gonna give our thoughts on it. Here we fucking go. I'm gonna start from the top to bottom, okay? New York. Among young college students, the frequency- college students rule! Shut the fuck up. The frequency and type of video games quite appears to parallel risky drug and alcohol use, poor personal relationships, and low levels of self-esteem, researchers report. Funny thing is, I'm playing on least right now. Here's what they're basically saying. That playing video games is a peril and the same thing to risk to drugs and alcohol use. Along with oh first Oh god, I can't stop. <sighs> oh god, this is so Big because we already we already know Sonic's on speed. Alright, getting back on topic, um this does not mean that Ed Laura M. Medella Walker told Reuters Health. Rather, these findings simply indicate video gaming may cost her with a number of negative outcomes. For, oh, I don't know, my fucking entertainment. If I was watching television, it may have some negative outcomes. Like, for example, I may get tired. Or some bullshit like that. Uh. Alright, um... <clears throat> Okay, apparently Dizzy somehow dropped in the chat. So, I guess it's just you and me, Junior Fan. Alrighty. Alright. Continuing on, um, let's see. She and colleagues examined the previous 12 months frequency and type of video game and internet use reported by 500 female and 313 male undergraduate college students in the United States. The students who were 20 years old on average and mostly received course credit for their study participation also recounted their drug and alcohol use, quality of the relationships with friends and family. Again, they're saying, oh, video games is the same thing like drugs and alcohol. Do do do. Uh, yeah. Let me just say that first of all, logical bullshit. I mean, they said on average, it says 20 years old is the average for... <laughs> And we don't do drugs or drink alcohol. Exactly! You no, know, they're gonna make you do drugs, they're gonna make you do alcohol. I mean, bullshit! That is a load of BS! Well, if I play Sonic Unleashed right now, I am gonna be Smoking seriously some pot. intoxicated when it, the Werehog stage me beating the shit out of, like, the freaking dark guy. I mean, seriously, what the fuck were they on when they came up with these stupid theories? I don't know. Doesn't know. make a bit of sense! For example, compared with young women, young men reported video gaming three times as often and reported playing violent video games nearly eight times as often. Oh god. Oh, here well, comes- that makes sense. That makes sense because, I mean, as far as him saying that the men play- that the boys and the men play video games three times as much as logical bullshit. I'm sorry, but whenever- I mean, I can understand if the little kids were playing, you know, violent video games and they were killing people. I can sort of understand that, but that stupid Jack Thompson theory, and that's, a, and that's the parents' fucking faults. But, I am not talking. Yeah, I mean, that's just retarded. Anyway, go ahead. All right, it gets worse. Listen to this, and I quote, 
young men were also more likely to use the internet for entertainment, daily headline news, and pornography, while young women more often used the internet for email and schoolwork. Unquote. That is a load of horse shit. This is the same thing with Mass Effect. Oh, guys who um, play this game, um... What the fuck did that stupid woman said that male gamers, um, they look at, like, they get, they only play Mass Effect because they want to look at some girl's tits or some shit? Let me say that first of all, people, the, the people who came up with the, these, uh, let's see here, how should I put these, these hypotheses that they obviously have on a very conservative news, you know, on a very conservative, conservative news program slash news media which is from Fox K News Corporation let me say first of all you idiots that there's a thing called Playboy where women can actually look at men at men's uh, you know their little penis yeah penis <laughs> yeah penis yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh. And another thing that has to be stated. So, you're saying, Fox News, that it's okay to chat with people, shop around, go shopping, being entertained, and looking at pornography in real life is okay, but on the internet, it's not? My God, that's the biggest hypocrisy I've ever heard. But continuing on. However, regardless of gender, clear correlations were seen between frequent gaming and more frequent alcohol and drug use. Again, what does alcohol and drug use got to do with fucking video games, okay? Alcohol and drug use are really addictive substances, okay? We were just exactly, and here's the thing about it, you know, it's harder to get off fucking alcohol and drugs than it is video games. It can turn off the freaking system. Yes, it's your choice that it. It's your choice if you played video games. Along with the choice, it's your choice that you want to drink alcohol or use some fucking drugs. It's your choice, and no one should be banning this bullshit because why? Because you, the customer, bought this shit. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm happy playing my 360, which I bought like two weeks ago. I'm happy playing. Uh, Sonic Unleashed. I'm happy playing Halo 3. I'm happy playing Call of Duty 4. I'm happy playing uh, Sonic Next Gen, yeah, which made people say, oh, it's a bad game, but really it's not. Anyway, back to what I was freaking saying. I bought it so I can actually entertain myself. Yeah, and not just take drugs. That, then they are fucking morons and they should get, and they should go back to fucking college and understand common knowledge. Exactly. Paul Walker sees these findings as a starting point for future research. Oh my god, they're actually taking their time to research that there's a that video playing video games is fucking similar to drug use and alcohol. Let me state something right here right now, okay? I'm fucking twenty years old, going through college right now, and I play video games. But it sounds like the fact that I apparently take drugs, and drink alcohol. That's a fucking insult right there. Fox News is basically listing a stereotype. Guys like to work at pornography on the fucking internet, while female college students would want to go on their chat rooms and do some schoolwork. I find it as a fucking insult. This is the same shit when Darkness was, was insulted by a Fox News report on Mass Effect, when basically the stupid bitch who thought... Mass Effect has this feature where you have to look where you have virtual sex or some dumb shit, which gets male gamers hor horny or some shit. And what she's basically saying is, be is that all male gamers like to play video games just to look at some girls' fucking tits. This is the same case with this fucking report. And again, let me say this one last time: I am not a, I am not the type of gamer that likes to drink and fucking. Look at pornography, along with taking fucking drugs. I am a clean 20-year-old male. I don't take drugs, 
by any means necessary. You know what the ironic thing is? I'm a I have Asperger's syndrome, and I don't even fucking take drugs. I never took drugs in my fucking entire life. I was offered to take some drugs, and I said, no, I don't want to. And the other reason why is because I have a heart defect. I can't be around smoke. Simple as that. So Fox News, before you do your biased research bullshit, let me state one last thing. Not all gamers like to look at fucking pornography, okay? Some people don't want, some males don't want to look at pornography, okay? So how about you state your, you put, so, uh, how about you place your stereotypes up your ass and shut the hell up, and how about you stop reporting about video games? In fact, let me state something right now. If you're going to bash on video games, there's no, there's no point for you to report on video games, like reviews, for example. There's no point if you're going to do reports like this. It's bullshit. Oh, and, uh, <sighs> let, me state, let me go ahead and state something as well, people. I'm 20 years old. I have Asperger's as well, like T4. Mm -hmm. And also, I'm not particularly a college student. I'm more of a janitor. I'm actually more of a janitor working at the local... Arsenal as far as doing uh, cleaning govern government like buildings, but here's the thing: if I was caught playing video games, doesn't that? I mean, it's my entertainment. Like I said before, people, because if why would they consider video games a drug? That's just retarded. Because my job has, let's see here, a drug test plan. So you're telling me that if I play video games, I failed the friggin' drug test as far as the urinal and the hair extension, you know, test that's going on. Are you people out of your fucking minds? It's like me watching television and that Fox News makes a report that, Hey, watching TV makes you feel like doing drugs. I kind of find it funny that Fox News is not bitching about television and radio stations, but only on fucking video games. That's the bullshit part from Fox News. And that pisses me off as a gamer itself. Yeah, and it's all because they supported Jack Thompson, all because he's fucking Republican. Uh, big fucking deal, Fox News. Actually, can do something else. Actually, talk about something else besides the fucking video games for once. How about this? Actually, talk about the fucking economy, you assholes! Basically, we're saying this. Stop wasting your time on pointless shit that makes total fucking common sense. Guys like to look at pornography. Big fucking deal. You like to make up bullshit stories out of your asses and publish it nationally. It's our business, so stop getting into our private lives and shut the hell up and report something more importantly that ha that matters in our country, in the fucking entire world, than fucking video games and its controversies. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I mean, I was going to say what T4 said. Basically, what Fox News people is basically doing, they're basically writing a bunch of conservative bullshit yellow journalism that basically is trying to brainwash and say, oh, video games are bad. Video games ain't good for me. The only bad part about video games, people, is if you sit on your ass 24 fucking 7 and playing Halo 3 at least uh, 8 hours a day and not get fucking exercise. That's the only bad part about video games. That's, that's really all I've got to fucking say about this shit. Because, for my opinion, the people who write these articles, they need to be fucking shot to death. One last thing I gotta state before I hate this rant. Before you research again, how about you start playing video games? And see the f results for your fucking selves. I'm done, and this is Junior Fan and Cyber Wolf saying, Have a nice day. Well, um, this is awkward. I mean, it's been so long since I actually posted a video like this. Rather nostalgic, really. I mean, it's been over a year. I do hope that there is anybody out there watching this, though. At least I hope. Okay, so, I suppose I should explain why I had been gone from both YouTube and, well, DeviantR, if you're still watching it, for so long, if not years. Practically, for DeviantR, I haven't done an update for years. YouTube, it's been about over a year. Well, this is going to be a little bit long, so bear with me. So, grab a soda pop and popcorn if you wish to.
Okay, so, the first reason for my long, overdue absence was probably the most important one initially. I had to finish my time at the university I was attending. I knew that I had to apply more time to my personal work and studies. I had to push my YouTube hobby aside in order to accomplish this. One moment I'm taking a language class, and then after that, I'm taking a painting class. And then I was in an acting play, and then there was, you know, uh, drama classes that I was taking. And then I was studies, you know, for, you know, social studies or humanities. All that jazz. It was inevitable, but it was needed for my personal accomplishments. Last year in December, I did just that. I graduated with a bachelor's degree in art, a goal that I had set for myself for so long. Then a buddy of mine and I saved up a lot of money to fly to Florida for over a week. Following our return, I then asked myself, well, what now? Well, I almost don't know. I technically know what to do in my personal endeavors in terms of my post-college life, but in terms of knowing what to do with my hobby on YouTube as well as DeviantArt, for now, it's really hard to say. Now, follow me on this. My persona on YouTube has honestly been diminished, not necessarily from my recent college studies, but from other obstacles that had gotten in the way. I'll keep this as short as possible. Simply short, I felt that I lost my stride in my videos. I recorded a rant that was planned to be uploaded for YouTube, and before I was set to upload it, I showcased it to a friend of mine whom I will remain to this person to be anonymous for obvious reasons in order to get that person's feedback. <sighs> it was bad. Really bad. As in, I didn't write a script for this kind of bad. As in, oh my god, this is so awful that it makes my first video really bad bad. The main issue that it was unfocused, it was inconsistent, and it was biased. It was at that moment I thought to myself, I'm... I'm done. I don't think I can do this anymore. And it didn't help from the past videos or commentaries that I did that I felt that, you know, maybe I went a little too far in one of my videos, or maybe that one video commentary... Not video. It was a rant video I did, and yeah, you know, I got some people talking about it. But again, it took me a long while to make that kind of video, and then it dived down a bit because you know, of, you know, of reasons that. And that rant video I was planned was after you know the you know the transgender bathroom scenario. Um, but the point I'm trying to make here was that this was that was that I needed to take a hiatus. Now looking back, it was long overdue. And this was, again, over a year ago. And I still feel as if my full stride hasn't returned to its prime. I almost feel like I'm not ready for rant videos. I meant to return to the ranting scene, but I felt that I wasn't personally ready to gain it back. And if anyone's wondering, no, our friendship wasn't broken over that kind of ordeal. It'll take a lot more than that, you know, in order for, for that to happen. But I'm getting off subject here. It also didn't help that I was undergoing some depression, which undermined my attempts to record any more episodes and or produce more artwork for DeviantArt. That, and... I'm gonna be honest here. I honestly thought that people producing rants and or commentaries was, commentaries was just... A relic of the past. It was something that was big. It was booming all over the place years ago. And then it just died down. At least from what I got the impression from. I once thought that I needed to move on from that. 
There were times I was going to produce a video, but the lack of stride and periods of my depression suppressed me from doing so. I didn't even produce a video that celebrated my 10 years on YouTube. I didn't have any motivation anymore. It was gone. One time when I looked back at my channel, I kind of thought that the channel just died and that I let everyone down. I felt that I let myself down, as well as the people that watch me on YouTube. I thought I wasn't good enough for making videos anymore, so I just stopped. I needed to be with my peers and spend some time with my family to help me with these struggles. And during that time, I was just about to be ready to move on from YouTube videos. I was actually going to be planning to make a video that would state this is the final T4 TV rank video and then following that was going to be my final goodbye to YouTube forever. And it didn't also help too that YouTube's policies weirded me out in the sense where they're undermining, you know, YouTube ranters, you know, just for the sake of not just profit, but or something else, you know, under their own impressions. So yeah, I was almost ready to move on from YouTube forever. And I wasn't going to do anymore. Or even, even if I was to come back to it, it'd be for a completely different reason. Like if I was to, say, have a animation channel or something like that. Well, so, what got me to come back? So again, I'll keep this short as well. Well, I still have people that still watch me to this very day. People still take time out of their day to watch some rant videos. People actually still commented on my videos. That was something that I honestly needed. That first spark. Right there. And. That was you know. Back maybe a few months back ago. And people still comment on the. Nostalgia Tard video. Or the Journey video. Which I'm surprised people still talk about this day. Um, and granted. I'm, while, I was, while I was glad for that. I felt that. The stride just wasn't still there and then some new material came to my attention to which I thought that I could possibly produce videos on but there was also this right I needed to make my videos better I mean it's 2018 I need to give it a makeover maybe put it on HD or make better drawings you know instead of you know, using MS Paint. Well, granted, I don't hate MS Paint. I just try to make the videos look better. Or, better yet, write out my scripts better. I could go on. I could talk about the pros and cons, you know, how I can make my videos so much better. But anyway, um, we're going to start um, discussing who the hell Eric Mokrachek is. As y'all might have seen from my Eric Mokrachek Chronicles, the guy at the time... Well, why I had that um, <laughs> Discord up? But anyway, this is Eric Mokrachek right here. This is the guy who is... At the time, I said he was 35 years old. Oh, thank you. I miss T4. I, don't, I guess he got tired. Well... T4 is supposed to come back um, on his channel to do some other things, but he's been busy. Um, anyway, Eric Mokrachek is this guy right here. The point I'm trying to get across is that I'm recovering from being on hiatus for so long that I needed something to get me going again. And I'm thankful to say that I did find it, and it's almost there. And hopefully I can produce a video. Which is funny because I recorded this and I just uploaded this video that you're watching on YouTube. A dually. But again, 
I must state this with utmost sincerity. I am terribly sorry for keeping you all in the dark for so long. I am truly sorry. I am very sorry. You you all didn't deserve this type of treatment. I still feel bad for it. You all deserve better. And as long as people still support me and support my videos, I'll keep doing what I do best to an extent, keeping you all entertained. So, yeah, that's what's been going on for about over a year and why I haven't been producing videos as much. Now you know. I hope that you all understand. Um, now, I'm going to give you all a hint in what my next video is going to be. A giraffe. A giraffe. It's, you know, that very tall creature that has yellow slash orange skin or fur. And it's got all those dots all over the place. So, see you all in the next video. This is T4 saying, it's good to be back again.